Welcome, my beautiful souls. Um, this reading is going to be for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising. Uh, some of you are intuitively guided. I want to thank you for paying attention to your intuition, um, as do your guides. Um, and I say that because I read through my spirit guides. Um, I always invite them into every reading. And I feel like my guides connect to your guides. By the way, I feel like that's why one reading can resonate with so many different people. Because again, it's like your spiritual team um, bringing you signs, you know, look for synchronicities. I definitely would even ask your spirit guides to give you like words of confirmation. Um, don't forget, you may get like goosebumps, something like that. Something will let you know if a reading is for you. Um, so just be open to it. Just be open. So again, Capricorn, sun, moon, rising. Some of you could certainly be in love with the Capricorn. I know platonically, uh, my granddaughter is December 26th, the, you know, Capricorn of my life. Um, and I know some of you share her birthday. Faith is her name, by the way. Uh, so anyways, this is... You know, if you're in love with the Capricorn and you're here just checking up on their energy, same thing. Just be open to receiving signs yourself. You know, your guides will use whatever they need to to get a sign to you. So um, let's go ahead and get into the reading, though. So we're going to use um, really five different decks. We are going to use Mother Mary for her beautiful words of wisdom, but... For the November readings, by the way, I don't know if I said this is for November 2024, though, again, time is fluid. You know, I feel like whenever a reading finds you or you find it, that's divine timing. doesn't matter how much time has passed. If it just feels right, then it probably is right. Um, but anyway, we are going to bring back the, if I can pick them up, the Major Arcanas. And we're using these for like bullet points. We'll begin with these. Um, again, uh, probably t like three or four cards is usually enough. And um, sometimes they tell their own little story. But we'll definitely see how they relate to the reading. They always relate back to the main spread. So we'll begin with those. I did bring out the Romance Angels. And um, I will use these if love happens to come up which I don't know if a reading ever happens where some type of love doesn't show up. Um, but that's real life, right? That's real life. We are going to use the Gita Tarot to clarify or really go deeper to get you real solutions to whatever it is you're facing, um, whatever it is you need clarity in. That's why the readings are long, because I want to give you, you know, kind of like a roadmap that you can follow. I, um, something I've been saying this month also is this channel is not about predictions. It's about potentials. Um, and I feel like we all have the potential to really reach whatever goal we want to reach. It's just, you know, will we, or will we let something stop us? And that is why, again, I go deep because, if there's something that's presenting itself, but for some reason um, you're unsure about it, then what I hope is this reading brings you that clarity that you need. Uh, for your main spread, Capricorn, we're going to use the Psychic Tarot. And by the way, I'm doing opposite signs again. And what I mean by that is your opposite sign is Cancer. So right after I'm done with your reading, I'm going to do Cancer. Um, I started this back in September. I felt intuitively guided to do it this way. Now I get it, and I've just been I've just been staying with it. I kind of love it because our opposite sign can teach us so much. Um, a lot of times it can be what we're lacking, you know. Like I'm a Virgo sun, and Pisces is my opposite. Well. I could certainly use their emotional energy. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm doing opposites, by the way. Um, but let's go ahead and open up your reading. Everything is always pre-shuffled before you get here. 
But I do like to chuckle with you here. And when I say with you here, I'm telling you, I literally, I like in my mind's eye, we're all sitting together here. All right, let's give him a cut. Not a lot of cards, so. And I don't really read these as people. I'm going to bring the lid down. Um, though I will give you the sign. Make sure my cards are in the upright. And um, Capricorn, let's begin. Well, hello, star. This is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. But this is about manifesting them. This, I feel like in the star's energy, it's a reminder to work hand in hand with divine. You know what I mean? Like divine can help usher in, well, a dream, a wish. But then it takes like your action steps. So that's what I mean when I say working hand in hand with divine. Putting those intentions out there and then watching them come back. This is also a card of your neighbor, Aquarius. Put that right there. So it makes me feel like there's some type of wish coming true. Or the potential of it coming true anyway. Well, hello world. The next chapter. Beautiful. So, you know why I love this so much is... The world does speak about, like, you know, starting a new chapter. It doesn't have to be in all areas of your life. However, I do feel like, you know, it's ever-changing. Um, probably eventually it will change, you know, the rest of, you know, maybe one thing, one wish that's coming about, but that wish may help change other areas of your life. To me, the world is a very spiritual time. Um, I feel like it, you know, for the rest of your life, it's like when you found that spirituality, you know, when you're trusting in your guides, um, this is also the energy of like closing out old chapters, right? So this new chapter seems to want to open up and why would we stop it? Because it's part of, part of a wish, so it feels like this wish can be granted. We have judgment, your spiritual team. Interesting because judgment's looking right back at the world. Almost telling you, you know, I feel like don't fear whatever change is about to happen because judgment is about a rebirth. And sitting, you know, actually blowing the trumpet right back at the world, then whatever new is opening up, it feels, um, it feels kind of divine, to be honest. You know, judgment is a reminder to bring your attention to the present moment, because this is where your signs are sent. You know, they don't send your signs out in the future, back in the past. They're right here, right now. So, you're being called to the present moment because there's about to be some type of change. However, this change is nothing we have to fear because it's part of a wish, a dream. It's something coming true. All right, let's see if anything else wants to come out. Oh, hello, hangman in the awakened state. Look at this. Someone has awoken. I don't even know if that's a word. You know, um, someone has found their spirituality. Someone who's been seeking guidance spiritually, but for this earthly plane, has found it. You know, the hangman is, is normally like a pause in the action. <clears throat> but this hangman um, has found the wisdom that he was seeking, he or she was seeking. So now it does feel like movement. Interesting, it's also following judgment, right? Because I feel like very clearly you're able to trust in your guides, trust in the signs. You know, the hangman is swaying towards judgment. And it's mirroring the star. 
you know, if it was the other way, I mean, it's in reverse, but if it was, let's say, upright, you know, like this, then you could still be waiting for something, but it's not. It's in the awakened state. That means you are in the awakened state. Hmm. I like that. All right. Let's go ahead and bring in the psychic trail. And let's see what's opening up to you. You know, you have three out of four cards that speak about current moment energy. To speak about some type of change. But yet, it's all coming from your dreams, your wishes, and then the manifestation of that, especially with the hangman in the awakened state. Again, I feel like wisdom that I've been seeking, I find signs that maybe I've been asking for, I receive. All right. So, psychic Chiron. And let's go ahead and begin. We have transformation. This is the death card. So definitely it talks about a closing of a door. But, you know, closing of this door. I, I like what is ri what's written here, transformation. That's what it allows. It allows some type of transformation. Um, you know, sometimes the hardest part in, I don't know, maybe just in life itself, is learning when to close certain doors, knowing when a chapter is over. You know, when I've extracted, let's say, all the wisdom I could, or I've learned whatever lesson. Um, but this is wanting. I feel that you want this door to close. This also speaks about a rebirth. So you have two cards that already are talking about a rebirth in your life. Um, card of Scorpio also. <clears throat> Coming right under the star. Some of you it could certainly represent Scorpio. All right, we have financial and material changes. And five does represent a change. And then look at this, another five. Emotional loss. This is the five of cups. Interesting. Two fives could certainly speak about two changes. And that might be why I felt like the star was more than just one thing. Again, two energies that talk about rebirths. It could talk about a rebirth in two areas of your life. One may be in your money and one may be like within your emotional house. Hmm. You know, the five of cups is the energy of focusing on the things that I have lost, you know, the cups that have fallen over in my life. Um, it, the, the danger of this energy, if I don't consider like what I'm focusing on is it can turn into like the woe is me energy. And I don't mean that lightly because listen, if something happened, if there's someone you're missing, um, I know that's not easy. Interesting, he's got his hand over his heart. Okay. Um, but, you know, here's the thing, though. With, first of all, with the Five of Pentacles, sometimes I can talk about something that's happened outside of your control. Doesn't always feel comfortable. Um, but again, it's moving you to something new. Hopefully it's like an increase, but it may, it may have taken like some type of change to reach a certain status. And then, then the five cups, 
remember when this person, oh, I was going to say about the Five of Pentacles. I often feel in the Five of Pentacles, even though that can be temporarily difficult energy, again, can feel like, you know, almost like a, like a tower I didn't expect. Um, but in a way, I feel like it is serving you. You just may not know that yet. And in the Five of Cups, when I'm no longer focusing on what I've lost, well, you've probably heard me say this a million times, there's two cups behind this person. And I do feel like it's a soulmate. Um, and I love that it's also coming under judgment. So let's keep going. We have the full, a new beginning. And I think I'm going to take five across. And then we have the eight of swords. All right. So someone's worried about allowing themselves to have a new beginning. You know, the fool's here. And the fool's the perfect energy to take on right now. It's interesting because the hangman's in this wakened state. So to me, it feels like these thighs and this eight of swords is probably energy you've already overcome or you are overcoming. You know, jumping into the fool's energy. That means I'm allowing myself to have a new beginning. I'm going to take a leap of faith. And I feel, you know, the clarity should be, or at least the ability to trust, like, what you're feeling seems to be really strong. Now, the Eight of Swords did come out. And this is a self-created prison. You know, here it's called Trapped in Fear. Um, this is about walls that we build up. You know, walls of protection. At least, you know, to me, this is an earthly or a human um, condition, let's say. You know, uh, clearly, I don't want my heart broken. Clearly, you know, there, well, in the Eight of Swords, I feel like, it is a self-created prison. And the only person who can uncreate it is you, if you're the one who's created, whoever created it. It is mirroring the death card, transformation. It is an eight. So eight is also about a new beginning. Coming right next to the full that literally says a new beginning. All right, well, let's keep going. You know, the Eight of Swords just doesn't really fit right now. Because, again, the hangman being in the awakened state, the world saying about the next chapter opening up, the star is about your hopes, your dreams, your wishes, and mirroring the hangman in the awakened state it feels like the right time for some type of change. Um, and then taking on that fool's energy, like allowing myself to have a new beginning. And listen, it may have come after a very difficult time. But this transformation that's taken place, it all seems worth it in the long run, let's say. All right. We have authority. This is the emperor. Um, card of Aries. Sacrifice. Card of Leo. Beautiful. Material Harvest. This is the Nine of Pentacles. Um... And the Nine of Pentacles, well, here it says material harvest. But this can be a self-created uh, business. You know, the meaning of this card is successful self-employment. But it doesn't have to be self-employment. It can be, you know, like often I feel like I could be a subcontractor. Um, you know, it's my ideas and the work that I put in um, that gives me this harvest 
you know, in the Nine of Pentacles, it's a very independent type energy also. It's definitely where you feel comfortable, you know, like you can stand on your own two feet. Some of you, this may just be the beginning. Some of you could have lost a job. And although that's difficult, it may be putting you on track to like start your own business. And let's just say you already thought about it or you're already begun, but you wonder if you're on the right path. Well, this tells you that absolutely you can be um, successful. Not just successful, but really a material harvest. Often when I see the Nine of Pentacles, I think about seeds, my seeds of intention that I probably had already planted and now coming to fruition. I feel like we're talking a little bit about love and money. You know, there was some type of sacrifice. And that sacrifice seemed to come through your financial and material world. Because this is where the change is at. And although it says sacrifice, I feel like in the long run, like something feels like it happened outside of my control. But really what it's doing is moving me into a period of time where I'm probably going to have a hard time believing that like, like, you know, especially after like these thighs and that eight of swords, like if I let down that down those walls, I'm willing to take that leap of faith because you have the wisdom to do that now. Um, and the nine of pentacles, you know, it is like your seeds of intention. It is your hard work. You are the sole benefactor of the Nine of Pentacles. Now, that doesn't mean, like, let's say I work for a company. Um, what that would mean, it's your ideas that bring success. It's like if I was, like, a real estate agent, I may work for a company, but it's me out there on the field doing the work, right? It's it's a commission that I'm making going into my pocket. And then we have stand your ground. Interesting. Um, and before I move on, I, I just want to say that I love the emperor. In the same line of the nine of pentacles, again, material harvest. Because I often feel like the emperor is a business owner. <clears throat> you know, the emperor is someone we can look up to. The emperor is someone who has a lot of experiences, but really has learned from those experiences. Doesn't mean like right off the bat, you know, but has figured out a lot, you know, like the hangman. Okay, now I'm aware. Now I understand. I understand how energy works. I understand Maybe where I've been blocking myself. Again, back to that Eight of Swords. You know, protecting myself, or I think I'm protecting myself. But I feel like because Death Card is, the Death Card is mirroring that, that's part of what I need to let go of. I need to put these walls down and just take a chance. Take a chance. I feel like stand your ground is saying don't let anybody talk you out of like ideas that you're having um things that you want to do in the world or even people you want to be with like that's what i'm feeling with stand your ground it's interesting though because in this image it looks like someone's claiming um like like planting their flag you know, claiming success, it feels like. It's like telling the world, you know, I mastered the world, so to speak. All right, we have partnerships and alliances. Hmm, two threes back to back. 33. Um, 
I see, you know, I used to see 33 all the time in my readings. I haven't seen 33 that much lately, but here it is. So to me, that means some of you may have a life path, a master number 33. Um, or you could learn from that energy. And then what you want to do, if it's a master number, you add the three and the three, which would be a six. I could certainly talk about relationships. But let's take it card by card. So partnerships and alliances. Certainly you could be connecting with someone and bringing your energies together. But here's the thing. This is the three um, where I feel like this is the energy of celebrating your individuality, being proud of who you are, how far you have come. Someone else is definitely proud of how far you've come. Someone else definitely sees your individuality and appreciates it. You just want to appreciate it with yourself. I kind of love that it's mirroring the emperor. And then we have the three of cups. Rejoice in celebration. This is the energy that truly brings joy to your heart. So we can see that something is happening here. It feels like you're connecting with someone. Um, it feels like that Eight of Swords just doesn't need to be here. And this is really about a time for you to celebrate your accomplishments. Celebrate these, even these little steps forward, you know, like jumping again into the fool's energy, allowing this new beginning. It's saying that you, you found the wisdom. Now you just got to put the action in. And I could also see some of you um, doing something in the world where you're helping others. You know, when I think of the emperor, I think of someone who is definitely compassionate empathetic this is someone who does care about their fellow man their fellow woman brother sister um and wants to help those do better you know who's willing so i could definitely see you using your own experiences maybe to create your own business hmm Right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Wow. Okay. So we have the tower. Now the good news is it's on the bottom. And I feel like that is what the fives are talking about. That's even what the eight of swords is talking about. So something probably happened outside of your control. You know, a tower is disruption in our life. Let's see what's right below it. Truth. Judgment. So whatever this tower is, though, again, difficult, disruption, change, but in a way, it might be really beneficial. <clears throat> Maybe I didn't ask for it. Again, some of you could have lost a job, but then you turn around and you begin something new. And it becomes very successful. I can already tell that, like, success is going to be yours. Just don't let the tower, like, get in the way. You know, it's like your spiritual team. They're not with you just during the good times. They're with you, especially during the difficult times. And they're there to help guide you, to help you move on from this energy. All right, so the tower. And then sitting right next to the death card. Eight of Swords must relate back to the tower. But at the same time, it's asking me to just allow myself to have this new beginning. You know, there's certain things I just couldn't control that were outside of my control. But the one thing I can control is me. 
and what it is I want to do in the world and the effort I'm willing to put behind it. And I definitely feel like you're going to be guided. So there doesn't, you know, this, the Eight of Swords again, just doesn't feel like it fits. But I do know it's relating back to the tower. But remember, it's a number eight. So it's asking for a new beginning. That means walls come down. I trust my intuition. I trust within my spiritual team to guide me. And therefore, I don't need these walls. Something's coming in that is bringing joy to your heart. I have no doubt with that. You have the Nine of Pentacles right in the middle of the reading right now. And it's interesting because maybe some of you, that's where you've been focusing, like on your Pentacles, on your craft. But yet, we do have an emotional loss right above that, so that could talk, that may speak of love. We'll see. We'll see. Let's not go too quick. Um, but let's go ahead and bring in the Gilded Chirau. And let's go ahead and get right into this. Deeper if we dare. All right, let's give him a cut. Introduce him into the reading. And we're going to start at the beginning. But of course, we're going to read it as a whole. So, the star. Your hopes, your dreams, your wishes but actively manifesting them. The hangman in the awakened state. The world, the next chapter. And, you know, I often feel in the world's chapter, whatever is opening up for me in this energy, chances are it is for the rest of my life. Because the world card is the last card in the tarot deck. And I often feel it's the closest energy to God. And what I mean by that is it makes me trust. All right. Well, let's see. People on the board so far, though, you know, I don't really like, I don't really like you focusing just on like a certain sign. And the reason why I say that is because we really carry a little bit of everything. You know what I mean? And that's why I feel like you're all people in a reading unless I feel it differently. Like, I feel like the emperor is more of an energy here. But let's see. Let's keep going. Hello, soulmates. So, this is coming over the star, but also connecting it to the death card. Could certainly represent a Scorpio. Um, this is a soulmate. Remember what I said about in the Five of Cups? When I'm no longer focusing on what I've lost in my life, I'm no longer focusing on the cups that have been knocked over for whatever reason. When this person says enough is enough. And maybe, maybe what you did is turn around and put your energy like into your finances. And it definitely feels like it paid off. But now I feel like we're also answering the energy of the five of cups. And I told you in the beginning how when this person makes a change, there are two cups. How interesting that it came out already. So, connecting the star and the death card together. Hmm. Seven of swords. Interesting. Eight of swords. And then the wheel. Now, the wheel is right over the full. So, to me, the wheel speaks of your destiny. It can certainly talk about certain seeds that have already been planted. And this is just now the time. Like, this is, let's just say, divine timing. 
you know, and I want to remind you also that, you know, our will, our destiny doesn't, doesn't just consist of joy and rainbow and roses. It also consists of lessons. And I feel like the biggest lesson here right now, especially because of the, the, your, the desk, because destiny is coming over the full in this new beginning and touching the awakened hangman. Now I feel like we got to step back. So over the five of cups, again, that emotional loss is the eight of swords. So it is telling us exactly why the eight of swords is here. Something emotional. And if you go back one more card, you have the seven of swords, deception, envy, the thief in the night, someone who takes more than their fair share. Um, I to feel in the seven of swords, it can be someone who tells a lot of like little white lies to the point where it's just, it's impossible to believe them anymore. Now, I also feel like this is relating to some of you in your work. You know, it's like, like my ideas, um, I want to say being looked over, but I don't feel like they're being looked over. I feel like they're being used, but maybe you're not the one, maybe you're not benefiting from them. Maybe someone else is taking your ideas, claiming them as your own. Another reason why I feel like the tower, in a way, is kind of saving you. But it does put you temporarily, again, in difficult energy. But if I look at it in a different way, like without this tower, maybe the wheel never would have started moving again. You know, whatever I'm dreaming about, which we know is part of it, is the Two of Cups. So not any old love, soulmate love. You know, I'm looking at the Seven of Swords, and I have to say, I don't really feel that it's coming, like that energy has to do with love. Now, it could certainly talk about like old energy and like relationships you've been in where, you know, you just keep finding that, you know, I can't trust, I can't, tr or maybe I have a hard time trusting. I mean, definitely, you don't want your heart broken, right? Um, but I feel like this is more you claiming, like reclaiming your life again. And it may have taken like a little bit of a shakeup to get you, to get this wheel to start moving again. You know, these two fives and then two eight of swords. True. I mean, two changes, but also two new beginnings. This could also be energy of someone mirroring your energy, you know, going through similar situations. I mean, I do love the wheel. Again, your destiny. Touching the awakened hangman and the foal, a new beginning. Look at that's the two of wands. So you have two twos mirroring each other. One is the two of cups, which is the soulmate. And now the two of wands. To me, the two of wands means that I'm willing to take a step forward. It can even signify like what type of path you're about to walk down. So we know there's a soulmate somewhere along the road here. But this is you saying, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a step on this path. Even if I have a little fear, I'm not gonna let fear stop me. And again, that hangman has found the wisdom that he or she was seeking. 
from their spiritual team. And their spiritual team is right next to the hangman. So I get like the wheel now spinning again. All right. We have four pentacles coming over the emperor. Two fours. 44, by the way. 33 over here. 44 over here. We have the beautiful magician over sacrifice. We have the Nine of Cups. Look at this. Coming over another nine. Nine of Cups is about inner harmony. This is after the fact. Finding harmony again within oneself. It's being okay with the changes. And I feel like ultimately. Understanding that. You know without these. Without these certain changes. Maybe even without this tower. I couldn't have reached this energy. I find it interesting, though, the synchronicities between the 33, the 44, the 99. Um, by the way, the Nine of Cups is also about fulfillment of wishes. You know what it feels like, Capricorn? It feels to me like <clears throat> there's been some type of change within your financial house. But this change, even if I didn't ask for it, it ultimately feels like it's just putting me on a path that probably my soul wanted to take anyways. You know, I love the Nine of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups together because the Nine of Pentacles, I'm feeling very independent, right? I can stand on my own two feet. There's not even, a, there's no problem with that. Nine of Cups over that, that inner harmony. You know, and I do feel that about you. Like, you know, when you you feel independent within yourself, well, then life feels better. The magician right behind that nine, these two nines. We have the moon. Um, card of Pisces, ruler of Cancer. It's coming under the wheel. So the moon can speak of uncertainties. You know, I can only go as far as the moonlight allows me. I can only see as far as the moonlight allows me. But sometimes maybe that's all I'm meant to see. You know, sometimes maybe I'm just meant to take a step on a path and then allow it to just like open up naturally. The moon can also talk about very dreamy type energy. We have the Hermit. So you have double Virgo on the board also. The Hermit to me speaks about the wisdom you've gained through your experiences. You know, I often feel like the Hermit has gone through the dark night of the soul. And you'll see that in some tarot decks where like the Hermit is entering a cave. I'm going in, it could be isolation. But I'm seeking wisdom. I'm seeking answers through the hermit. I feel like spiritual answers. But for this earthly plane. And you know what I love about this image? Is you see the hermit has emerged from the cave. So whatever wisdom I was seeking. And sometimes I'm just looking for the light. And what I figure out is I am the light. I am my own savior. But this is someone who, first of all, I feel like can be an old soul. Might be why it's coming over 33. Like some of you are here to master certain things in this lifetime. Another thing I love about this is the hermit's lantern is illuminating a snake. And I feel like that's a sense of comfort, really. Because what it's saying is anything that's coming towards you. If it's, let's just say, of a lower vibrational energy, your beacon of light's going to illuminate it. You know, that snake can't bite you because you can see it. So, a lot of wisdom gained through the hermit's energy. And I love how the lantern is actually illuminating 
Um, uh, you can't see that. I should have brought that over a little. I like how it's illuminating the energy of rejoicing in celebration. So, you know, my wise old souls are finding themselves. They're taking their wisdom and they're creating a better life for themselves. We have the Queen of Wands. Hello, the world again. First of all, there's some synchronicities going on here. So I feel like who's ever in this Two of Cups with you, whoever is your soulmate, let's say, this just may be the time. This may be the time where, especially if you can, like, uncreate those walls. And to uncreate those walls, that means that you're going to trust within your intuition. That, to me, is the lesson of the Eight of Swords. You know, instead of building walls up, trust your intuition because your spiritual team is here, definitely helping to guide you. And definitely, I feel like some of you are picking up on that. Maybe not everybody yet, but I feel like in time you will because this wheel wants to move. Destiny wants to open. And coming over the fool's energy, asking you to take this leap of faith. Even if you do, you're uncertain, well, I don't know exactly where it will take me. Maybe, again, it's about enjoying the present moment. And just allowing energy to flow versus trying to put any restrictions upon it. You know, the world, again, which is mirroring the world. And the magician here. The Manifester. Queen of Wands can be an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Um, but this is my Queen of Action. This is my Queen that moves according to her desires, her passions. She doesn't let fear stop her. Doesn't mean like, you know, there's zero fear in her life. She just doesn't allow it to stop her. Like, if I feel pulled towards it, if I feel passionate about it, then I'm going to follow it. This is someone who definitely puts actions behind their words, you know, their steps. And then it moves right into the world. All right, well, let's keep going. I'll probably bring the Romance Angels over the Two of Cups. We have the King of Cups. King of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. We have all of them on the board. But, to me, this is the King who... As it relates to love, let's say, is someone who appreciates love, appreciates having that special partner. You know, if the king was reversed, which I married that king in reverse, then I'd say run. <laughs> but he's not. He's in the upright. And he's also following the world, coming over these two nines. And mirroring judgment. And then we have the three of wands. So this is taking on exactly what the fool is asking for. Right? Being in the current current moment. This is living in the current moment with a sense of optimism. Again, with the moon right there, maybe I don't know exactly where something's going to take me. But I'm going to have an optimistic view about it. You know, this is what judgment asks you to do. Live within the present moment. And this is the energy of just knowing and trusting that your ships will come in. They'll come in in divine timing. But I feel like divine timing is like now. <laughs> so, optimism. Optimism after 
the tower after the Eight of Swords. Also, it's mirroring the wheel. So I feel like there's nothing to fear here. We have the Seven of Cups. And then, look at this, we have the Six of Cups. So the Seven of Cups is you making a decision, right? This is you choosing from a cup. You have the Six of Cups. We can talk about someone you already know. Um, but listen, if this is someone I already know, then I would feel like this would have to be someone who is mirroring my energy. So what I mean by that is I don't feel like this is anyone who has caused me like a lot of heartache. Um, because also remember the Six of Cups is about happy memories. And I kind of love the hermit right there because I feel like we're talking about two wise old souls, but it may have taken time to realize that. Seven of Cups. Interesting. Well, it's also a card of Cancer coming over Cancer's ruler. But it's really deciding, am I gonna am I gonna choose this cup? I feel like the two of cups is saying. I'm coming in, like I'm coming in. Yeah, I sit upon your wheel. It just feels like the right time. I feel like the ball is always put in your court. You know, that's what I call free will. But at the same time, this is about happy memories. So this wouldn't be someone that when I think about them, um, I don't know. Like, I don't feel like I would think about them in a negative way. And again, it's connected to the three of cups. So something to rejoice about. So I feel like the six of cups must tie back to the two of cups. Now, does that mean that this is love of this lifetime? Well, when I see the hermit connected to that energy, um, it can certainly talk about past lives also. Because I do feel like the hermit is like a wise old soul. And to me, that means I've lived life before. Um, and maybe I am here to master something. And the hermit is illuminating the cups. There's cups all around them. What's underneath it? The um, partnerships and alliances. Interesting. <coughs> hmm. I might collaborate with someone and then fall in love with someone. Or I may fall in love with someone and then collaborate with them. I love this energy of two people like building a life together. But I feel like I feel like there's a lot of synchronicity. There's a lot of um, similar type energy, even similar experiences. Seems to me like, you know, the hardest energy here, besides the tower, what is the Eight of Swords. Now, I feel like there's good reason, right? Because the Seven of Swords right before, it says somewhere along the road, you dealt with some untrustworthy type energy. And it does feel like it's coming more over your finances. But... To me, it feels like like someone's stealing your ideas, but I feel like if that's the case, maybe you left that job, maybe you got fired, but maybe you take you are now like understanding that you were meant for something bigger. You know, something feels like it had to be sacrificed, but I feel like what really is being sacrificed is your the way you're thinking you know your thought system trusting more in divine and less within 
you know, because our thoughts can lie to us. And we got to remember that, like our thoughts aren't always truthful with us. We got to think about what we're thinking about. Um, I just can't help but see the synchronicities, by the way. Again, 44 may mean something to someone. 33, something to someone. 99, two world cards. Um, what else? There's some other things that were the same. Soulmates, two people, right? And I kind of love... The King of Cups is coming over the Nine of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. So in a way, I feel like, like, I feel like I'm really getting my shit together. You know, maybe I'm even really starting to enjoy my life. And there may not be anybody else in it right now in a romantic way. But it's like figuring out that, you know, I can fulfill I can feel good within my life, even without love. Now, that doesn't mean love's not coming in, because it's coming in. But first, there is a door that needs to be closed. You know, so unless this is a Scorpio for you, then it is representing allowing this transformation to happen. Remember the death card closing one door, but then a new door always opens. The world card, it is the next chapter. The wheel, it is your destiny. And you, in the awakened state, I feel like you're trusting in it more than you ever have. You're at least willing to step into it. And I feel like that's all you need. Just take a step forward. The three of wands, optimism. I'm going to expect good things to happen. The magician, the manifester. And the magician coming right over the world, but also mirroring the world. I just have a feeling somewhere in your life, in your current life, um, and it could be like your recent past, but I felt like you dealt with someone who just um let's just say it wasn't of a trustworthy nature and that's what did it, it seems that's what caused you to put these walls up but i feel like these walls can come down and some of you i feel like you may have just sim simply said you know, I'm not even going to focus on love. I'm going to focus on myself, on my career, on, you know, what I do in the world. And I feel success is there, like the Nine of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles. So material harvest and inner fulfillment. But again, let's not forget the Nine of Cups is also about fulfillment of wishes. And then the King of Cups comes out. So King of Cups is someone who's very open to love. All right. Um, I think I just want to look at the wheel real quick. Before we bring out the romance angels. Let's just see if we can get a little clearer picture of that. Ace of Swords. So, Ace of Swords. First of all, it's my yes card. Ace of Swords can certainly talk about communication, but it would be truthful communication. Ace of Swords can represent triumph, being tri triumphant. It can be some type of communication that's coming towards you. But again, it would represent the truth. We have the three of cups again. So joy, 
So this feels like this is going to be a joyful time in your life. Um, and you have two, three of cups. So, you know, fulfillment of wishes. Well, here's two things now to celebrate. We have Justice, Carta Libra, but it could talk about cutting a ties. You know, the old ties are just no longer serving us. I feel like the simple act of cutting certain ties, whether it be to a person or just the way we're thinking, I feel like the minute we cut those ties, it brings balance into our life. And that's really what justice is about. Justice is also about making you whole again. Some of you could have certainly dealt with some karmic lessons. But here's the thing. If you were dealing with karmic lessons and you learned those karmic lessons, like you, you passed that test, then you pass that test for eternity. And then look at this. The Knight of Cups. Unexpected Cup of Fulfillment. Unexpected. Yet, we're looking at your will. Your destiny. So, you know, justice could certainly, first of all, it is Carta Libra. Um, but it does feel like Certain ties were cut. And for some of you, I feel like it's more within your thought system. And it's bringing you back to whole again. It's You're feeling more balanced than you've probably felt in a long time. Well, that seems like the perfect time for this night to come in. And I feel like we can just go right up to that two of cups to know what that knight of cups is talking about. Could be communication that comes unexpectedly in the form of, let's just say, romance. I was going to say love, but who knows if it's love right off the bat. Maybe it's just taking a step into it. You know, to me, Capricorn, your reading feels like, you know, some things happened outside of your control, but you made the best of it. And maybe even you're you're able to look back now and be like, thank you for that tower. Because that tower is what really allowed me to start living life according to my terms. You know, how it gives you the ability to feel happy and content within your life. It doesn't mean everything is perfect. These two nines also may talk about two people who find themselves, you know, maybe they were connected to, to different people and now may both find themselves single at the same time. Sometimes I feel like this is where social media comes in because I can see, like, people changing their status from, like, relate, like, in a relationship to single. Oh, you're single. You're single. Maybe it's my time to give give it a shot. Hmm. Okay. I feel like I just want to go right underneath that, though. So an unexpected cup of fulfillment. <clears throat> and really this is about celebrating that so in a way I feel like celebrating of love like a dose of chariot um, card of cancer we have a lot of cancer on the board but besides that the chariot it, you know, it really represents unlimited potential. It's another energy that needs balance first, right? As I find balance within my life, then it really is unlimited potential. Um, can be the balance of the feminine, the masculine, the light, the dark. I feel like the chariot comes in kind of like a reward. Like when you're ready for it. 
when you can see the potential that the chariot can uh carries you know you kind of feel like it definitely feels like it could be the rest of your life Some of you may ask yourself that. How do I know that this night that's coming in that we know is a soulmate? How do I know that, you know, it can last a lifetime? Well, a lot of that is up to me, right? It's the view that I put on it. You know, it's allowing myself to feel the joy that it's going to bring me. Even if it starts with like, let's say a phone call. Or like a text me- a text message or, you know, on Messenger. I feel like no matter how it starts, it feels like it brings joy to you immediately. But can we shut that down? Of course we can. You know, that's where fear again can raise its ugly head. But at this point, I kind of feel like you are, even though fear... I feel like you, you know, we have to think about real life. And if I've been through some difficult, let's just say, love situations, and love is about to enter the door again, then it would make sense that I'd have a little fear over it. But then I would say, that's probably why the Two of Wands is here. It's just stepping into it. And I feel like the rest will take care of itself. Put down the walls. Trust your intuition. Trust your spiritual team. And, you know, ultimately, you say yay or nay. But I feel that if you feel that just the communication alone brings you a sense of joy, well, then that's your soulmate. All right. Let's go ahead and bring in the Romance Angels. And let's look right at the Two of Cups. And again, this Two of Cups is connected to the Star and also um, the Death Card. The Transformation. Close one door, a new door opens. Let's go ahead and give them a cut. All right, so let's look at the soulmates. Look at this past life relationship. Wow, I kind of felt that with the hermit's energy. So, and you are soulmates. You have known each other before. Well, the Six of Cups would even say that. Now, it can be this lifetime, right? It can be someone you know within this lifetime. Um, But again, if it is, it's someone who would probably, you know, when you think about them, it'd probably bring a smile to your face. Yet at the same time, I want to say you did have past lives together. And I felt that. Look at this, worth waiting for. Divine timing is at at work in your life, in your love life. I can't speak. Divine timing is at work in your love life. And this is a past life relationship, your soulmates. Judgment, calling you to the present moment. So maybe I have been waiting, wondering and waiting. And then lo and behold, look what shows up. Divine timing is at work in your love life. I mean, come on. All right. So with that in mind, I want to take another one, but I want to come over here. Where we have the Ace of Swords. And don't forget, in the same line, we have your destiny. Right? This is about your destiny. 
and you in the awakened state again, to me that means that you're not letting fear rule the day, that you are able to like pay attention to the signs. And by the way, if you feel like you missed a sign, ask your guys to send you another sign. But that trumpet's looking right at the world. So it does feel like this is like here worth waiting for. Well, it feels like it's talking about now or soon. So I just want to come over and I want to look at the Knight of Cups, which is the night that's bringing in this love. And the Ace of Swords. We have finances and career. Well, that makes sense because that was your second card where it talked about some changes happening in your financial house. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Some of you, I feel like, you know, it's like I wanted to feel good within my own skin, like within my own, you know, like I, I want to have my financial life together. Doesn't mean like I've reached material harvest, but I'm on my way. And that's what seems to bring you, and it makes sense you being earth, right? That brings you a certain sense of comfort. We have release your ex. Well, that's probably what the death card's talking about. The time has come to clear your energy and it's coming over justice. And then romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So that comes right over the Knight of Cups. You know, it's given us a clearer picture of what justice is. For some of you, again, it could be an X. But listen, if it's talking about an X for you, then I don't feel like this ex was producing much. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like they were all lovey-dovey. I could, I could even see where you may have been dealing with someone who, um, you know, it's like as you earn money, their hands were out. Like taking more than their fair share. I feel like releasing this X, it feels time. It feels like it's time to anyway. And again, that tower could have been someone like someone could have broke up with you. And sometimes when that happens, even if we know, let's say we're no longer in love with them. You know, I can think back to like when I was married to this King of Cups who was in reverse. Um, even though... Everything went wrong. You know what I mean? Even though this, he was someone who cheated all the time, um, I couldn't count on. The breakup was still hard. Even though I knew it was the best thing for me. You know what I mean? And I didn't even have love left at that point. But it still doesn't mean it was easy. Um, but boy, am I thankful that I did. Right? That I did release my ex. And I feel like what this is saying is when you do that, when you cut those ties, even if it's like, again, someone may have broken up with you, but I feel like if you really look at the situation, chances are they weren't worth waiting for or they're not worth waiting for because I feel like this soulmate wants to come in now. This soulmate is part of your wheel. Your ex may have been a karmic lesson. And again, I feel like there's something with the ex and also your finances, you know, where, listen, they, they put, I feel like they put a hindrance on it in some way, whether it was just like not believing in the, you know, your dreams and what you want to bring to the world, you know, someone who's like, that won't work, you know, um, or maybe I just was putting all my focus on them and not on me. And now I feel like 
if you were able, sirens just gone off. So if you were able to like let this energy go, I mean, the time has come to clear your energy. It's so this wheel can start moving. It's so that these blessings that are meant for you can find you. And for some of you, I really think that you were dealing with some karmic lessons. And I want to remind you, when you look at it like that, um, again, let's just, let's put it a different way. If I've given someone like a lot of time and a lot of effort to prove to me that they could love me, but yet I have to give, keep giving them time and, you know, and it's driving you crazy. Then I think I got to let them go. Because this feels, this two of cups feels the complete opposite to me. I feel like this is talking about like for a lifetime. Now you do a free will. And maybe both the soulmates, again, going through similar type of energies. And both of them had to learn to bring down these walls. It's like a spiritual team is trying to get through that eight of swords energy. And do I think they will? I do. I do, I do, I do. Forgiving and learning. Something just made me look at the bottom of the deck. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Well, hello. So, to wrap this up, we're still going to do Mother Mary. But, again, we open up the, this reading with your dreams and your wishes and about manifesting them. You know, the star, the person in the star card is looking right over at the world and judgment is looking right back at the world. And then you have the world here. So I wouldn't be surprised. First of all, I feel like your financial house, I feel like you are, you know, I feel like you're doing the things that feel good to you in the world now. You know, some of you have created your own business. Some of you, I feel like, you know, you're doing something where other people are really looking up to you. You know, maybe you're helping them now um, through like some type of a business. I feel like naturally, it's just natural energy because I feel like as you learn and grow, naturally you want to help others. But I feel like this, some of you, it's like what you're doing, you know, I, listen, let's just let's make a long story short. I feel like whatever you're whatever's changing in your financial house, I feel like in the long run, it's a blessing. Because in the long run, it's what brings you this inner harmony, joy within your own life, even before love. And then I feel like then love enters the door. Maybe through communication. Let's just ask that question. So, as it relates to love, tell us a little more about how this is, how it's coming in. How is this soulmate energy coming in? And by the way, you know, I feel like these two people, when they come together, there's going to be, first of all, it feels like they're on the same vibrational energy, which is always a good thing. Um, you do sit on each other's wheel. You have had a past lifetime together. You're, you know, divine is saying that this love was worth waiting for. You know, it literally is saying divine is working in your love life. We have the two of swords. Okay, well, that's better than the eight of swords. So two of swords could just mean to blindfold that for whatever reason. Um, you know, it's often like something that I don't want to face. 
but it really does serve me to face it. You know, those blindfolds, the longer we wear them, the bigger the problem seems. But I feel like that's illusionary. So I feel like one of the things we need to learn to do or would best suit us is to face fear and not to run from it. To face it. Knight of Wands, Passion, Desire, the Four of Swords, Beautiful, Healing. So, this love, first of all, you may feel it before it even arrives. But it definitely feels like, it's almost like two soulmates who knew before they even come together that each has gone through separate difficult experiences. And it feels like the soulmates are gonna help heal each other, like heal those broken little pieces. And it feels quick. Like, this is not something I have to wait for. I feel like very quickly I realize, you know, maybe I just realize the difference within love. Because there are different levels to love. This feels, of course, especially with the hangman in the awakened state, this feels like of a high vibrational energy. Another reason not to let fear stop me, right? Face it. We have the five of wands, interesting. So another five. You know, five of wands could certainly speak about because it's touching, release your ex. And in the five of wands, there's a lot of ego type energy. It's also the energy I feel like that if like I'm waiting for someone to say to me, you know, I know what I've done wrong, this and that. I don't feel like I get it. If I'm waiting for someone to apologize, I don't feel like I get it. But the thing is, I don't feel like I really need it. You know, this five is about change, but it's connected to your ex. So, you know, it doesn't feel like there was a lot of beautiful energy connected to that. Maybe the beginning, but certainly not in the end. All right. Ace of Pentacles. Well, wow. Ace of Pentacles to me means that something is coming into your physical world. And we are looking at the soulmates. So, literally, coming into my life. We have the Ten of Swords. And then we have the Two of Pentacles. Interesting. So, the Two of Pentacles is better than the Two of Swords, first and foremost. Two of Pentacles, they call it the Juggler's card. I feel like it's using your logical mind. You know... You're seeing the ace, which means that literally it's coming into your physical world. You have the ten of swords in between that. But if I look up, it's connected to that eight of swords. That's connected to that four of swords. Now connected to the ten of swords. Ten of swords can talk about a repeat pattern. You know, and that may have been the case with this X. Like, it could have been someone, like, sword after sword was put in your back. But this is about healing that and letting it go. And knowing, again, the divine is working in your love life. And I feel like the only reason I would say no would be because I'm still, I'm still fearful. And we have to go right back to the full. Because the, the fool is about taking a leap of faith. 
interesting because, you know, we had the Ace of Swords, which does talk about communication, but it also speaks the truth. And now we have the Ace of Pentacles. So it could start as communication. Again, someone reaching out through the phone, through text, through social media. But then I feel like very quickly, then you meet in person. Maybe that'll be enough to like sway you. Because again, I do feel like you need a little swayed. Um, but everything is telling me that this, the soulmates are of the high vibrational energy. That both of them, I feel like, you know, I feel both of them have gone through very similar experiences, period. And maybe both are now like really concentrating like within their creative house, their financial house. And they're finding harmony there. But now it's like, okay, but there's still one thing missing. Which brings me back again to the nine of the nine of cups, which talks about fulfillment of wishes. Not just a wish, but wishes. So it, it kind of gets it, to me like I'm reading this like as my creative house, my financial house. As I feel stronger and stronger within it, when I feel strong within my, you know, standing on my own two feet, that does feel like divine timing. That does feel like the right time to now introduce this love into your life. Again, I feel like releasing your ex is a big part of that, especially with justice right underneath that, cutting of those ties. But then it turns around and opens up a soulmate energy that you have had past lives together. You know, this hangman in the awakened state makes me feel like the soulmates will eventually come to the conclusion that we have lived past lives together before. And I feel like, you know, when, when you talk about soulmates, there is soulmate recognition. And I may not even be able to put a name on it, but there's something, right? It's like they're looking eye to eye, where the eye is the window to the soul. And, you know, through conversation, like, you know, I feel like, you know, if I'm one of these, one of the soulmates here, I feel like through our conversation, we really are. And again, take it slow. No need to rush this. Because I feel like this will, or it has the ultimate chance of, of lasting a lifetime. But I still don't need to rush it. Because there are a lot of swords. There is still a little bit of fear. There is a need to release an X, but release the energy of them. That means I'm not going to allow their energy to have any say within my life, within my current energy. Remember, we have the three of wands, optimism. That's a choice, right? I can look at this in an optimistic way, or I can look at it through a fearful lens. I feel like both may come into play a little bit, but I feel like pretty quickly, you'll be able to tell the difference. And that's what I feel about a soulmate, especially since you've lived a past life together. I feel like, and divine saying that this love was worth waiting for. But listen, sometimes I feel like divine's waiting on us also. And it may be simply to release that X once and for all. And to allow that, that wheel to start spinning again. Don't forget the chariot represents unlimited potential. But we have to consider free will. I feel like there's nothing negative. With this person, um, though, as I say that, I want you to be realistic, right? Because no one is perfect. We're born imperfect. Um, so, you know, can't expect someone to be perfect. But I can think about my own energy also. Because if I'm looking at my life 
like, I, let's just say, like, I have my financial, at least I feel pretty good about my finances. I know the direction I want to take. And then love opens up. I feel like you're much more apt to at least consider it. I don't know why I'm trying to talk you into it. I don't feel like I really would have to talk you into it. Um, I feel like your spiritual team is just, it just feels like it's all in divine timing. But I will say releasing your ex is a big part of it. But I feel like this ex hasn't done you a whole lot of favors anyways. And this is a completely different type of love. It just is. It just is. It's a higher vibrational energy. And to me, that means that the soulmates have really learned from the past. Again, it doesn't mean, because I feel the Four of Swords is also saying, whatever parts remain broken within me, and same for them, we're going to help each other. We're going to help heal each other. And maybe that's exactly what part of our purpose is. You know, to help heal those broken pieces of the past and those who didn't treat you right. Um, I feel like there's nothing to fear about this love. I really feel like there's nothing to fear about this love but fear itself. This feels like divine timing to me. And again, worth waiting for. Yet, I have to say, I do feel like sometimes divine is waiting on us. And that would go back to um, releasing that X. And then feelings, romantic feelings, even though it's starting at the two of wands, which really is signifying that the path you're about to walk down is a very passionate, desirable path action oriented but also the feelings that you're going to feel it feels like immediately you'll feel them okay anything else anything else i just don't feel like your reading is over yet Anything else related to the reading in general? Maybe I've missed. Is there anything else? Six of Wands. Wow. That's the energy of victory. Victory and success. And you know what else I love about the Six of Wands is this is an energy where other people are really looking up to you and they're looking up to you maybe you're speaking but it's because of action steps that you've taken how you've bettered your life um and i could even see some of you doing this like for a living and other peach people really paying attention to you you know this is victory and success within your life and it feels like it's time so, let go of those who just, you know, let's just say carry untrustworthy energy. Those who keep you hanging on a hook. You know, again, these soulmates, I don't feel like there's any, like, any game playing here. I feel like once we meet, it'd be hard, probably almost impossible, not to fall in love. And again, your feelings are real and worth exploring. And the more I can do that through an optimistic lens, the better my chances of this really lasting for the rest of our lives. So I feel like you are heading towards success in all areas of your life. Um, but it did take closing of doors La the allowing of new chapters, seeking that spiritual wisdom and receiving it. 
And then that wheel starts spinning and look at everything that sits on this wheel. This feels like your time, Capricorn. Like not just within your money, but your inner harmony. To me, that is, that, that's a gift. You know, it's, I say it's a gift, but it's, it's an energy we can reach. Doesn't mean everything in my life is going great, but I feel good. Okay. Let's not overread this. Let's bring Mother Mary in. And let's get Mother Mary's words of wisdom. <clears throat> so, I want to remind you again that that Ace of Swords, which probably is some type of communication coming over that wheel, that then is offering a new beginning. Um, and then the Ace of Pentacles means something coming into your physical world right over the world's energy so you know the ace of pentacles is uh, to me it's like a seed and i'm either going to love and nurture this seed like i often imagine your garden and i'm planting certain seeds well i'm not just going to plant them and then walk away and forget about them no i'm going to go back and i'm going to water them i'm going to nurture them and then they're going to blossom but I put the intention behind it. And that's what the Ace of Pentacles wants to do in your life. It truly wants to enhance it. Sobriety. My clear mind is easily able to focus and concentrate. Sobriety. And then giving and receiving. Look how dark my screen just went. There we go. Giving and receiving. This reminds me of the Six of Pentacles. I balance being generous and receptive because both are equally important. Well, I have a feeling with your ex, you weren't receiving. I just feel that. And sobriety could certainly talk about, like, how I handle, like, you know, these difficult situations. Do I tend to, like, try to drink my problems away? Or it could relate back to your ex. Um, you know, maybe an ex needs sobriety. But really, it's your clear mind that is able to pick up on these signs. Giving and receiving just feels like it's just... It should be natural within your life. And again, maybe it's something I had to learn. You know, because I don't feel like your ex was very giving. Maybe in the beginning. But then I feel like it went to like mind games. And I definitely feel like it played a major role in why these Eight of Swords are here. I feel like taking one more. I feel like one more wants to come out. Two more. Home. I trust and follow my divine guidance about my home. And then patience. Well, this is temperance. And that's temperance's first lesson is patience. Right? Patience to allow all good things to come together. Here it says, I trust in divine timing. Well, divine timing is now. And I know that because your spiritual team is blowing the trumpet at the world, the next chapter. The hangman knows this, feels it. Even actively manifesting some dreams, some wishes. You know, let go of control of exactly how they must show. Because they are going to show. And one is coming through the soulmates. And the other, I feel like, is coming through the Nine of Pentacles. I trust in divine timing. 
yet I feel like this is divine timing. This is the time. This feels like, it almost feels like a whole new life. But maybe as one thing starts to get better, another thing starts to get better, another, you know what I mean? Like one follows the other, follows the other. And all I need to do is just take a step, right? Be the fool. Take that leap of faith. You're ready. You're ready to. I feel like you're ready for this soulmate. And I feel like you're ready to claim, like, I want to say this independent nature. But I feel like that's first. And then you're open. And listen, I, you know, I am no, like, I feel like there's no need to rush things, right? Especially if I'm feeling really good within my own life. I've had some, like, big accomplishments because I feel like you are or you will. Um, and maybe, you know, again, love wasn't even on the radar. Well, that's what the Knight of Cups talks about. Unexpected. It's unexpected. But we know right from the get-go who it is. It's a soulmate. We know that you've had a past life together. And we know that chances are you wanted to come in this lifetime together. You probably don't know that. You know, your soul knows that. Um, and that's what divine timing is about. Like, because you feel ready. You feel ready. Now, maybe some of you are going to say, well, I don't think that I'm ready for love. I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this is coming in no matter what. It sits upon your will. It's part of your destiny. They're part of your destiny. Um, but again, you have a lot of energy also about you making up your mind. It's your decision. Um, but I feel like there's really no reason to say no. And I feel like if I say no, then it's probably fear. Though I already know some people are going to be like, that's not why I'm going to say no. I would just say be really honest with yourself. You know, and if it's something you don't want, then just say no. But this feels like a lot of good rewards coming your way. It feels like a lot of these dreams are being answered. And this feels like divine timing. It feels like your your will of destiny is moving. But again, you in the awakened state and the willingness just to take a leap of faith. And I feel the rest will follow. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. This went much longer than I planned. So when I say that, I never plan. Um, I just let them be whatever they want to be. But yeah, so I'm going to just let it be. Um, I thank you guys. I love you guys. Um, I would check out Cancer's reading because you do have a lot of love. In this reading, cancer showed up quite a few times. So there may be something you can also learn from their reading. I haven't done it yet, but I will do it today. Um, but you have success here. You have material harvest. You have soulmates. You have past life relationship. You have divine so actively participating in your life right now. Your will, it's a moving. And you in the awakened state, that tells me that you have been working hard to make changes in your life. You know, if nothing else, it's like, okay, I'm starting to understand energy. Like, if I don't plant these seeds of intention, if, if, if I don't look at things through an optimistic lens, you know, it's like if I expect bad things to happen, then it feels like they do. But what if I expect good things to happen? That's one of Mother Mary's messages. I expect good things to happen. And they do. There's a lot of goodness. There's a lot of love. And there's also a lot of abundance in this reading. There's also a lot of swords though. So that's 
that is, I feel like the energy you need to look at that then moves you into a much more open and trusting energy, like with your guides, I mean. But, you know, I often feel like these readings are also your signs. So there's a lot to unpack here. So I'm going to stop talking and let that be. I love you guys so much. Um, you know, my prayer for you is that this abundance finds you, that you trust within yourself to create the type of life you want, and then that this soulmate energy comes together in really in a way where you can totally enjoy it. You can just allow it to be, allow that joy to like resonate through your body. And I feel like the rest will follow. All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.